Hi friends, welcome back. So I got this message from a loving fan just six hours ago. A uh, comment on one of the videos, uh, name is Paul. He says, well baby boy, this is to me, uh, your lies don't work if you do a little research. The India plant uh, that they're going to be building, there's gonna be a Model 2 and all the layoffs they're doing in Texas because the Cybertruck's not doing so well, they're gonna start going into production of the Model 2. Uh, but <laughs> spelled with T-O-O. -O. Um, uh, but then again, you're a your Gen Z. Uh, you think that God and you already know everything just because you can get on the internet, but you're actually dumb in real life. You don't know how to do research. You don't have no real true ambitions in life. Other than thinking you know everything already, you don't know anything you're just running your mouth because your butt hurt generation Z's are just lazy, whining uh, female dogs. <laughs> um, I replied uh, six hours ago, uh, I just celebrated my 49th birthday. Have a look. And I, I gave a link to a video of my, my birthday. And uh, Elon and I went to the same school. And if you don't know, that's University of Pennsylvania. It's an Ivy League school. Considered a very good school. Um, guys, I uh, um, <laughs> I have to respond to this because I, I just thought it was a funny one. And the, the, the basic gist of it is, sadly, there's a lot of people who actually don't do their research and just make crap up. This is a prime example. Uh, this particular person thinks I'm Gen Z. I had to look up Gen Z because I, I forget the years and stuff. I get old, you know, I'm, I'm Gen X. <laughs> I know my Gen, uh, but uh, Gen Z is 1997 to 2013, I guess. I guess Canada uses different numbers, but Americans 97 to 13. I was born in 1975, so um, this Paul guy, he's off by uh, a couple decades. <laughs> but anyway, I had to share that with you. And I'm also talking about Paul because I do my research. Um, Paul, your account was started in 2021, and it appears that you like uh, Nelly, Keisha, um, Shaggy Media, I guess, Eminem Music. I like Eminem, the little, the real same Shady, no problem there. And uh, Lady Gaga, I like Lady Gaga as well, and Green Day, and Black Eyed Peas. So, you know, we agree on, on some of your music choices, uh, but uh, point being, I do my research. Uh, I, I encourage you to do so as well. Um, and also, too, guys, if you are new to the channel, uh, or if you're old to the channel, I encourage you to check out my book. Um, I have a lot of stories to tell, and also, too, it, it's to help you uh, be successful in this world and um, I try to do this also not just with my book but also my channel to educate and inform you and again <laughs> I do my research every single day and I show up with a smile because I find it fun I find it fun to learn something every day and I find it fun to learn um, things about you guys and again I don't just make up random stuff uh, but uh, sadly a lot of people do and and, and it's who knows <laughs> um, anyway let's go on with markets today um, it looks like Apple is down Nvidia was up uh, Google was down Tesla's down a lot of red, actually. I, I can see this. Tesla's down. Yeah. And Bank of America was down. They just had their earnings, I think, too. It's kind of interesting because I think they're up. Morgan Stanley was up. Look at that. Goldman Sachs was down. Microsoft was up, et cetera. And um, one of the headlines that caught my attention was, I guess, Apple iPhone shipments to China are a little bit disappointing. Samsung is now the, the top spot. I think you're going to uh, see a lot of news regarding this stuff. Apple, Tesla, these kind of things. Um, they're big companies and they're reliant on China. Uh, for revenue. So if, if China's not buying, not so great for American companies. Um, moreover, we got to talk about the macro environment. This is probably the biggest headline. I just want to mention the Apple thing, what's going on there. But this is probably the biggest headline is uh, what Jerome Powell said. Uh, we'll read the headline today. Jay Powell says inflation taking longer than expected. So I mean, we're not shocked. Anyone who goes to the grocery store, you know this. <laughs> I'm going to explain it to you. Uh, I can just tell you here in Korea, Man, have you seen the price of apples? It was funny because I, I, I was telling my wife about the price of apples the other day. And then lo and behold, it actually appeared in the news because, uh, you know, like like you kind of sense, um, you know, that things are going up, but you don't know by what percentage here in Korea. It's like apples are up 90 percent. So basically double. And, and it's pretty noticeable. Um, but it's not it's not just here in Korea. I'm sure you guys know about stuff going on in the USA. Uh, auto insurance is the big one I think people are struggling with. Home insurance is another one. Um, home prices are really high also. So it's not shocking. And, you know, anyone who who, who lives, <laughs> has to go to the store, has to buy gas, has to pay your electric bill. You all know this stuff. But, um, you know, the, the question is, and this is something that I, I, I posted, and this is the real challenge, is even if inflation slows, prices aren't necessarily going to go down to match, you know, sort of what we would all consider affordable, right? This is this is the challenge. So inflation is still there. It's still going up just at a slower pace, meaning price is a slower pace. Um, what else did Jerome Powell say? And uh, this is sort of what we're digesting this and also to the uh, Iran-Israel war stuff. Um, U.S. federal uh, chair uh, has uh, chair Jay Powell has said it is likely uh, to take longer than expected time on inflation for inflation return to central banks uh, 2% target and justify cuts to interest rates. 
I was thinking about this. This is interesting. We talk about the two percent thing all the time, but I they've lo- really locked themselves in, into a corner to be saying two percent, two percent, two percent. If they ever change that number, they would completely lose all credibility, uh, or or what little they have, <laughs> I should say. But 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 they they pretty much locked themselves in that. So that's sort of what we're watching this stuff. Um, uh, he, I mean, they they theoretically could change their target, but I, I just I think it would it would look really bad if they did. Um, here's what they said too. Um, we've uh, said at the uh, Federal Open Market Committee, so talking about the Fed here, uh, that we need greater confidence that inflation is moving sustainably towards 2% before it would be appropriate to ease policy. The recent, talking about inflation data here, uh, recent inflation data have clearly not given us greater confidence and instead indicate that it's likely to take longer than expected to achieve uh, that confidence. And um, I was looking at what's going on in the markets. So I already showed you the, the overall map. Um, this is the little indexy funds that track these things. So the Dow was up a bit. Everything else was uh, down. The Nasdaq 100 was flat. Um, if you take a look at this, this is interesting. So tech was the was the winner today at 0.11%. The loser was actually real estate and utilities uh, and also energy. Um, so this is my understanding of many of the utility companies. We don't talk about utilities companies that often. Um, so oftentimes these kind of companies there, um, I'll give you an example, like a Duke Energy is, is, is a, a pretty decent company in terms of like, People need energy. <laughs> They're not going to stop like, well, okay, how, how about this? If they have money, they'll pay their energy bills and Duke Energy will give them that energy, I have to say, because it does. it is a real thing. And some people sometimes don't pay their bills. That, that's a real thing. Um, but uh, regarding utilities, though, my understanding is a lot of these companies have a lot of debt. Um, it, it's, a, it's a heavy infrastructure business. And usually if you get into those stocks, they're, they're decent income paying stocks because they have a, you know regular money coming in and essentially they'll, they'll pay a dividend. Um, and so interest rates usually hurts these kind of companies. Real estate also too as well. Um, you know, be it your REITs or be it your home builders, these kind of things. So uh, REITs would be if you have a lot of um, leverage, which which is something that these um, you know real estate type things uh, manage quite a bit. They have a ton of property under management. They take a lot of leverage. And the basic idea is, um, can I you know buy a building with a loan and then can I you know rent it out? And uh, essentially the difference, <laughs> the, the, the margin there, right, is, is, is can I rent it out for more than what I, I got on my loan? Uh, the problem is that obviously if you got a variable loan, you're kind of screwed if rates are high, right? You didn't necessarily bet on that. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. But uh, we track this stuff every day. The big one, though, that I've been watching regarding what the Fed said and what rates are and, and what kind of what's going on the markets is what the heck is going on with the dollar? Um, so I'm in Korea. I always show you the Korean numbers just because I'm familiar with it. We're at 1391, 1400 is like ludicrously high, right? And, and we're, we're, we're right there. It, it's just been kind of a spike in the last couple of months. It's, it's very noticeable here. And, and I know I know it's not like, you know, dollars like tripling or quadrupling, et cetera, but um, dollars is a big deal. It, it, it's something you want to track. And especially for those of you who are around the world, you would know this as well. Or, or if you're American looking to go abroad and you start looking at, you know, uh, places you could go visit, um, I mean, Europe, Asia, et cetera. Uh, some people write in the comments, Bali or Thailand, I can just tell you, uh, those are good places to go if you want to be, um, or sort of to say, uh, the digital nomad kind of thing. Korea is starting to offer that. Actually, true story. Uh, Italy has been offering um, a one uh, a one year visa digital nomad thing, and you, they just announced that like a week or so ago. But a lot of Americans are are, are looking at. It. I mean, the dollar is strong. So if if you have ever thought about traveling abroad, um, now's a good time. The dollar is strong. Uh, I, I'll just, I told mentioned for channel, just mentioned again. So I I um, <laughs> left the USA around this time. Uh, went to Korea, uh, you know, left the country, and then um, came, we came back. Actually, we came back to the USA, and then we came back to Korea around the same, uh, roughly the same time around here. Actually, there, and, well, something like that. <laughs> uh, the point being, though, that the dollar is strong, and um, you, you you see it. I mean, it, it, against all major currencies, it was it was up. Um, the other issue too, which is really interesting, um, this is coming from the IMF. They're saying U.S. growth is going to be double other countries in the G7, and um, I was actually looking at this chart here that they put out. So this is 2024 projections again coming from the IMF, and uh, that would be the International Monetary Fund. Um, so here we have January 24 forecast, April 2024. Okay, so their forecasts have been upticking a bit. So in, in some places, so the USA is like here, right? Uh, India is the leader in the world, is what they're saying in terms of growth. You guys can see it in terms of their their current forecast. Um, which is interesting. And then um, the USA is outpacing Japan, France, Euro, outpacing Canada. I guess the emerging markets that they're, they're saying, and, and you know, that would include all kinds of markets, um, may outpace the USA. And then Brazil is just under the USA, and, and, but really it's, it's India is, is, seems to be the one um, that, that could be the big grower. And I, I've mentioned that before on this channel. Um, also too, in 2025, this is, I mean, 
but who knows that that's a while away yet but but they're 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 saying uh, india is still the, the leader um and then they're predicting if i read this correctly it looks like canada may pass the usa in terms of growth so maybe 2025 is when the usa slows down i mean according to this but you know we're still a long ways away um the the point being though is if indeed usa is is outgrowing um you know uh, neighboring countries around the world if, if i guess if our neighbors grow part of the little community um i think i think this has sort of been the the the, the wonder is the eu uh the european central bank uh, are they going to cut um rates before the fed that's going to be interesting um my understanding is is the inflation is, is a very different story over there compared to the to the us and also too if they are indeed facing growth problems in comparison um yeah they may cut rates sooner than the usa uh it's kind of a <laughs> it, it's a fascinating thing because it's like it, it, everyone's trying to like looking out for their currency so this is what you're, you're looking at at the same time um and uh my understanding too is japan currency is, is is really really weakening also um currencies are important when you want to talk about imports and, and exports right um and i'm showing you the uh, loan thing that this is all related is uh, essentially so okay if dollar is strong and, and currency around the world are weak that means it's easier for americans to buy stuff abroad right so therefore, uh, you know, theoretically, you're bringing in a lot of foreign products into the country because it's cheap to buy. Uh, but from the from the reverse perspective, so for example, uh, say you know you're and I'll use the example of Vietnam or something like that. Um, if you want to buy an iPhone, man, those are in China, you know, man, those iPhones are just way too expensive because you, you can't buy the American products. The dollar's too strong, right? You guys get what I'm saying here. So what happens end up being is is that you'll end up buying more local products and that'll hurt U.S. companies. Um, you'll, you know, the whole currency thing shifts back and forth to where, you know, suddenly the dollar becomes cheaper. And then like you maybe get, you know, more international visitors coming to USA and like, oh my God, look how cheap, you know, everything in USA is, et cetera. And they start buying more American products. So there's always a balance on this stuff. And, and it's, it's a complicated thing, but I just wanted to give you a general primer, how we're all connected. Uh, moreover, um, this also too is, is a reflection of sort of what's going on in our current system. It says here, loan growth stalls at the largest US bank. So this is kind of an interesting one. Um, and, and you could read this any number of ways. You have to ask Bank of America what's going on internally. You know, um, do we read this as um, they're worried that people are going to pay them back? Or do we read this as uh, they don't have enough money to loan people? Who knows? I mean, you can read it however, however you like. But um, the, the end result is, is the same, right? If, if the money isn't flowing like it once was, that affects all kinds of things, right? Be it, you know, people's ability to get a home, people's ability to get a car, et cetera. And so from like the regular consumer's point of view, this the average consumer is like, hey, you know, I'm getting killed on my, on my, you know, my new car loan or my home loan and you got lower rates, et cetera, right? That's sort of like how regular people think. But there's a couple of things I want to say about that. So one is um, historically rates aren't crazy high. I mean, if you just go back and look at the charts for yourself, I mean, we're not anywhere near double digit uh, rates. So, you know, people are complaining or just, and, and I don't want to dismiss people's complaints because I understand that, that it's a struggle. I, I, I completely get it, guys. I, I go to the store every day. I can see the prices. But um, just I'm just saying that like we can't go back to the era of free money if we want to control inflation. So this is the, the balance that, that the Fed's trying to do. Uh, and also, too, you know, it's not just USA alone. It's everything going on around the world. Uh, and that's why I enjoy our community very much. We have many people from many countries that chime in. I love to hearing what's going on in, in other places on the ground because I, I can read what's say going on in, in France or Spain or Brazil or whatever, or India. Um, but it's different when you hear from some local person. They say, hey, yeah, that's exactly what, you know, what I've been seeing on the ground, what, what you're you know, going over, et cetera. So um, I do enjoy that with you guys. And um, with all of these things, you know, uh, we're going to be OK. <laughs> we're going to show up again tomorrow. We're going to show up with a smile. And, and I hope you see you there. And, um, you know, again, uh, I, I encourage you, don't be like this commenter person just making out, you know, random accusations and stuff like that without any kind of research. Uh, I am not a Gen Z. I am Gen X. Uh, I guess you could say I'm proud of Gen X. I don't know. <laughs> my, my generation, we were kind of the, the slacker generation because the baby boomers took, basically took all our jobs and then they kept living, you know, too long. So there, there, there wasn't much opportunity for us. But that's a whole other discussion for another time. Um, but uh, anyway, I do appreciate your time, everyone. And uh, I'll catch you next video.